Hey y'all, my name is Jasmine Jones and I am a licensed clinical social worker and today you are now watching Black Girl Therapist in the Wild and we are doing a therapy mood video about a therapeutic topic, there you go. <laughs> and today's topic is, I read this book by Jeanette McCurdy and it's trending now, everyone's talking about it, whatever. It's called, I'm Glad My Mom Died. And it basically, you know, I had planned on doing a video about taking your parents off the parent pedestal, especially if you've been abused by your parents and things like that, how to learn how to let go. So I figured like, what an opportune time to do this video then because it's not a toy because this book came out and it's basically about this topic. And also we can talk about ways to help overcome as I sip on a Coke. This is Coke, it's not nothing in here but Coke and ice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking makes me thirsty, I don't care. <laughs> and so let's get into it. So let's talk about like the beginning of the book. It kind of illustrates, like she writes the book in present tense like she's the age that she's writing about. So it sounds like a child is talking when she reminisces about these past experiences. And which makes it really interesting because it illustrates how her mother was brainwashing her and also how she viewed it as a child, as a, as a teenager and as a young adult. And so, you know, the book starts off with just showing, illustrating just how her mother was just abusive. She was, you know, she had these narcissistic tendencies. She says she's narcissist in the book. But basically, her mother had her to fulfill her own inner wishes and dreams. She was her little mini me, basically, and she controlled her life completely. Now, during the course of this book, we see her mother just kind of just the escalations of abuse that her mother did to her like she felt so in control of her child that her child's body belonged to her too so she would sexually abuse her she you know and Jeanette calls them um medical exams that her mother would give her but really what they were were she would shower she showered this this woman until she was 16 years old and sometimes with her older brother in the shower and she would give her what she liked to call medical exams where she checked her breasts for lumps and then checked her private areas and things like that and it was just kind of like no this is sexual abuse as soon as you read it it's sexual abuse and then the talk goes into I think everyone wanted to read this because they want to see if she finally somebody from that Nickelodeon situation finally tells the truth about that motherfucker Dan Schneider <laughs> I don't care. He hurt the children. There are too many children saying that he hurt them for it to not be true. And I just tend, typically tend to believe the children anyways. And so, you know, she goes into, so this is this repeated abusive situations where she feels controlled, monitored, and taken advantage of. Even in her romantic relationships, there were just these relationships where she felt like she had to be she wasn't in control of the situation and she would internalize and blame herself for various things that would happen in these relationships or she would just put up with it as this is the norm of my chaotic life which trauma will do let's go back to her mom her mom makes me want to ask the question like why do we decide to have children some people decide to have children to have a little person that looks like them as a legacy to go on into the future to have someone that they can control and manipulate a clean slate a lot of people have children because they see them as objects they don't recognize that this little person for some reason people just forget their childhood when they grow up <laughs> forget they don't not necessarily forget but more so just act like it didn't happen <laughs> and forget their thoughts and feelings that they had when their parents did similar things to them they are they normalized it as oh you know well this is how you're supposed to treat children and you know they just kind of see this as a new clean slate for me to do whatever i want to and it's just like 
you are giving birth to an individual with their own thoughts and feelings. Yes, in some ways they are a clean slate, but in other ways they are their own person that are is has already, I feel like children already have developed a, a small semblance of personality, even when they're born, when they're just born. You know, those kids that, that just, it seems like they they were born with an old soul. That's why we say that sometimes are, they just do little things that you just don't know where they got it from and things like that. And so they still have their own thoughts and opinions. And yes, you can traumatize a person and they can repeat the traumas over and over and over again, but it never really takes away their individuality. It's just they've gotten to a place where they don't use their individuality because they don't know how to use their individuality. That's all it is. It's a, I don't know how to use this thing that I was born with because I've been pushed down so much throughout my life and I've never felt in control. So I just, you know... I don't feel like an individual, but we have kid. A lot of us are having kids for reasons that have nothing to do with helping this little person grow into a bigger person and not hurt themselves. <laughs> basically, basically I am guiding you along to help you figure yourself out, have adventures, explore yourself, learn about life and things and stuff. And not let you hurt yourself too bad to where it's detrimental to your health. So give you freedoms, but still have a nice little leash that's long enough for you to come back home if things get too scary and you always know that mommy's here to make sure you're okay. People aren't having kids seeing them as people. And so when you have kids and you don't see them as people, you just are going to objectify them. You are going to mold and shape them in certain ways that you feel is right because based off of your life experiences. So her mom, her mom's mom, the grandmother in the book is just a horrible person. <laughs> she, and you can see where she got it from. So towards the end of the book, we get more of an idea of who the grandmother is. And the grandmother is basically just like the mom. But, but I think because the grandmother didn't have her up under her all the time and making her believe that everything, every emotion that she has is because of Jeanette. Then Jeanette grew a healthy dislike for her grandmother who was abusive and emotionally manipulative and things like that, just like her mom was. But with her mom from a young age, from the age of six in that book, you can see how the brainwashing in her mind just, starts to turn. So her mom's been like manipulating the family with this cancer story for years since Jeanette was two and using it as like, I'm sure there's a sense of fear of the cancer actually returning, but mainly she's using it as a manipulation tactic to get what she wants out of her kids and anyone else who will listen to her story. She's using people's pity to manipulate them. That's, ba that's all it is. And so she's been using this thing. So Jeanette has been spoon fed this idea that her mom's cancer might come back one day and she's going to die. So even her own birthdays are not her own and her little six year old mind. That's where the book starts when she's six. She believes that if she makes a wish on her birthday cake every year, her mom will live that year. And so even her birthday wish is not her own. Like her mind is not her own. Every thought that she thought had to do with her mom. And that's how deeply you can brainwash somebody. But you know, as as a, and that's why abusers isolate you from like your family and friends because as you get more influences into your life you see the things that they're doing is wrong like Jeanette's mom knew she was wrong like when there was a point in the book because she basically taught her taught her daughter how to be anorexic so there was a point in the book where Jeanette was so thin other people were noticing and would talk to her mom about it like the doctor was telling her mom she thinks Jeanette is has an eating disorder her mom's like no I don't know what you're talking about Lady at one of Jeanette's dance classes says, I think there's something wrong with your daughter. She's very thin. I don't, I don't want to talk about this. So her mom knows. Even a point in the book where Jeanette is basically calling her mom out for some bullshit. And she's a child at this point. But, you know, so children will call you out because they believe everything you say is true. So when you say a, a untruth, they're going to ask the question like, what? But you said yesterday that the sky was blue. 
And now today you're saying it's green. I'm confused. So the kids are just going to blatantly, just bluntly ask and not think that anything's wrong with that. So basically her mom was saying something about um, how it's okay that we're not always going to church. We're not bad people. And then Jeanette's like, but I thought you said that going to church, not going to church meant we were bad people. Like, what, what do you mean? Something like that. You gotta read the book. I'm not going to go and do a whole like book review like, you know, um, I feel like this is a book that needs to be read by people and understood by people because it's a good book. Like I read this book in like not one sitting, maybe two days and I haven't read a book that fast in a while. So, you know, some of these things, you know, you, you know, spoilers. <laughs> and so <laughs> Jeanette's just, and Jeanette just like, but she can read her mom's body language and body cues to know that that pissed her mom off and so she knows to cut the conversation short she didn't know not to ask the question because she didn't know it was something that would piss her mom off yet so because she didn't think her mom was a liar yet (laughs) so when she gets older of course she realized that her mom lies and so she figures out that you know whatever she says in the moment is the truth it doesn't matter what happens I'm just not gonna go I'm just not going to question it so this child is brainwashed by her parent and it's like you have to go into like attachment theory and like Erickson's stages of development. So like with attachment theory, there's like different types of attachment. There's secure attachment, there's anxious attachment, there's avoidant attachment and so on. And so when it comes to different types of attachment, usually that has to do with your childhood and how you were raised. Secure households, the parent gives the child freedom to be an individ- their individual selves. And the child can, can go and explore the world and do things and have fun, go to school every day, make new friends, have to come back home, can talk to their parents about things that they're concerned about and worried about. But they feel safe coming back to their parents and they feel safe exploring the world because they know their parents have their back. So they, they, they feel safe in the world. They feel secure. You know, anxious attachment is this ang- anxious feeling that, you know, it's, it's when you're raised by a parent that wasn't there for you wasn't you know nurturing or was overly nurturing and so now you have this anxiety that you're always going to be left and so you cling to your parent all the time because either they weren't there enough or they were too much there and then you have avoidant where you just avoid any kind of challenging emotion period and you go into defense mode and that's you know due to a parent that was overbearing or aggressive or in your face or was making you feel bad was neglectful so they weren't there and stuff like that and so you just kind of avoid you avoid close relationships as you get older you you have trust issues with anxiety with the anxious attachment you get overly clingy and overly attached to people and things like that with a secure attachment you're just secure you know I love myself I can love someone else I can we can be in a relationship together I can work on myself they can work on themselves we can work on each other together and things like that there's a balance so it seems like from reading the book Jeanette grew into this anxious attachment with her mom this codependency so codependency is basically when you feel the earth cannot move unless you are with this other person doing things for or with this other person your life your whole being is dependent on this other person being in your life and so you will do anything say anything and mom was codependent to her too so people forget that narcissists manipulative people are codependent in themselves because they cannot let go of their emotional support blanket which is their victim their victim is what they pour all their challenging emotions into so that they don't have to deal with their emotions. So if their victim is nowhere around, then they're forced to sit in their own sad emotions. And you know, when a lot of us sit in our own sad emotions, that's when we hit rock bottom a lot of the times and we want to go get help and fix things, but they don't want to fix things. They just spiral and stay in that. And then in their mind, their negative thoughts are more so about how other people don't like them. Other people are the problem that's stirring around their mind. And maybe in an occasional, like I'm so horrible and stuff, but mostly it's like other people don't like them. Other people hate them. And so, you know, 
this mom, she had the, these issues that affected her child so deeply that this child couldn't think for herself. Every thought she thought was, how can I make mommy happy? Everything she did was, how can I make mommy happy? She and her mom were best friends. She could read every little body language movement off of her mom. And that's mainly because when you're in an abusive situation, you are noticing even the slightest breath that comes out of this person because you want to avoid any kind of over-the-top outbursts, abusive moment situations you want to catch it before it comes so you're constantly walking on eggshells looking out question you're constantly on so in this book she said that she had to be constantly acting because when she was with her mom she had to constantly pretend to maintain her mom's emotion because her mom like if you went against her even for the smallest thing like her dad came home like a few hours late one day and this woman went into the kitchen got a butcher knife and started screaming at him that he was a horrible person he had to sleep in the car and this man stayed with her for years and apparently you know there were some things going on in their relationship i'll leave that in the book because those are spoilers that you know you need to read the book but the, the thing is this man stayed with her even through all of her shit and it's like people also forget that men can be abused i have clients that are men, male clients that have been in emotionally abusive relationships and d didn't even realize it till we talked about it in session and i was like that sounds like emotional abuse hmm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they didn't know they didn't know you know they didn't know that the reason why they felt depressed all the time when they were around their girlfriends <laughs> or the reason why they felt that they weren't good enough or the reason why they had low self-esteem and all this other stuff around the girlfriends was because they were being emotionally abused by their partners and not realizing that they were being emotionally abused because society does not like to acknowledge that men have feelings and emotions and they can be traumatized too and quiet is kept that's why a lot of these men are running around with issues that we call fuck boys and all this other stuff because they have been traumatized and they have mental health health issues that they refuse to look at or do anything about so you know it is what it is because at this point you're grown you're grown you feel that pain you feel that sadness that hurts so instead of going and fucking the next bitch you should go to therapy you know because society tells men you know drink it away fuck it away all this other stuff and a lot of times that's what they do and i will back this up because statistically speaking there was an article released that was saying that single men are some of the loneliest men right now and I'll put it, I'll post it somewhere and put it down there because y'all ain't about to come for me. And so statistics are saying the same thing too. So this man was being emotionally and it looked like physically abused in this household and he was content to stay. You know, sometimes we get so abused and manipulated and bothered to the point where we just give up emotionally and mentally you know and we just keep allowing the shit to happen we just kind of move through life allowing the wind and the then the waves to push us around and stuff we don't it gets to a point where you just don't want to try to be an individual anymore you know so she living in this house with these parents one is abusive the other one is neglectful like emotionally ne neglectful her dad just isn't isn't capable enough to respond to his children on a consistent basis in a nurturing and caring way he's just kind of there and so you know the child grows in this household and normalizes this and so develops this anxious attachment and she gets into these relationships with people like she, well first she has to deal with this manipulative type of situation again when she goes to work and has to deal with dan schneider i'm gonna say his fucking name <laughs> i don't care and she calls him the creator in the book but you know it's dan schneider and so she's working on set on iCarly. She hates her job. She does not want to be an actress. She told her mom when she was sick, she didn't want to be an actress. That feeling did not go away. You know, people be like questioning children. Like, how do you know da, 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 if you don't, if you ain't experienced it and stuff? And that could be true in some cases. But like, if a kid is adamant about who they are, 
Like, take the little trans children. Like, I've, I've talked to kids that were trans that tried to kill themselves when they were five. So apparently you're adamant about this. This is, this is who you are. We're not going to, we're not, we're not going to keep playing with who you feel you are. We're just going to let you be who you are. And, you know, and we'll just figure it out as we go along because apparently this is a life or death situation at this point. See, you, you just, you just got to let kids be who they need to be. That's all I'm saying. Like, like what they want to like, do what they want to do. As long as it's not hurtful to them or to anybody else, just let them be, you know? So she starts working for iCarly and shit. His thing is emotionally abusive. There are some hints of possible like sexual harassment at the very least. But, you know, I'm sure there were things left out of what she was writing because the 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 I don't I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to because this ain't like a movie where it's just characters and stuff and they're not real people. This is a real person. So I don't want to like I don't want to assume stuff, but i don't know i just feel like there was more shit going on with him and with the rest of them kids and with her so i don't know but he was emotionally abusive on set he was you know uh i think he was fired in 2018 for like sexual harassment and stuff like that and there have been tons of stories on YouTube about his weird, weird ways, his foot fetish that he possibly maybe had because he had all these kids showing their feet and it was nasty. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't care. It's nasty. And so she's hopping from one abuser to the next abuser and not knowing what to do because her goal is to please her mom. And in order to please her mom, she has to please this man because, you know, if she don't please this man, she ain't gonna be on the show, which won't please her mom. And so she basically is trapped. She's trapped in the space of constant bullshit. She can't get out of it. She doesn't know that it's a problem so when you are just born into trauma you don't know that life's not supposed to be that way even when you see other people's lives that aren't that way you still don't believe that your life is not supposed to be this way you just probably think that well I guess you know other people get different types of moms or whatever or other people get different types of dads but my dad is this way so this is how it's supposed to be and it's like no it's not so eventually she gets off of television you know she has you know the regular teenage angsty stuff she's jealous of ariana grande because she's a teenager and teenagers get that way sometimes when the other teenagers are treated better than them and so it is what it is um but she gets out of tv and you know during the course of these shows and stuff she's dating like and seeing people so she dates this one guy who tried to coerce her into having sex and had a drinking problem and also had a girlfriend when she first met him and also she was 18 and he was like I think he was almost 40 because I think the second guy was 30 and then he was almost 40 but I could be wrong but she's dating this guy and this guy obviously has issues but when you're used to chaos it's like this is what life is and so I don't I I don't know different you know so that's why people that have been traumatized can put up with so much because they don't know different like we don't know what different is so since you don't know what different is why even think that there's something different she didn't realize what different was till her mom died but before then all she could think about was her mom and making her happy and so there's this dude that she goes out with who's lighter chaos than her abusive folks but still chaotic and then there's this other guy that she dates that she that's her first love and her first enjoyable sexual experience and all sorts of things but he turns out to be schizophrenic and then he turns out to just kind of deteriorate in his mental health for whatever reason because apparently he was seeing a therapist and he was seeing a psychiatrist and you know I don't know what his story was to where he started to deteriorate he became addicted to marijuana marijuana is more of a psychological addiction where you you get into the habit psychologically of feeling like you need this thing to feel better you know now 
I'm kind of on the line here because some people can do so much marijuana that they do have like some withdrawal side effects when they don't do it, you know, like depression and things like that. But you got to do a lot of marijuana. So that could have went into what was going on with him. Also, they do not suggest you do marijuana if you have psychosis because marijuana has the chance of making psychosis worse. Or if you have a susceptibility for psychosis in your family, it can make it pop up. It could just happen. And so that could also be a part of why, like she said, he was going catatonic where he was just frozen, staring off in the space and she couldn't shake him out of it and things like that. That could, And there's a catatonic schizophrenia where people are just going still and aren't moving and staring off into space and they, they have to be moved. There's also that in depression too, catatonia. And so he was going through a bunch of shit and she just was not prepped to handle whatever he was going through. He needed to work on himself a little bit more. Like, so she was working on herself. She was going to the eating disorder person. She went to therapy once and uh, the first time she well she went to therapy and then the first time she went to therapy after her mom died she met with this lady and the lady was doing a decent job you know she was a therapist life coach I don't know if she was a licensed therapist because when you tag on life coach at the end of shit you just kind of have to question like are you a licensed therapist or are you just like a life coach that added therapist name to I don't know so anyways but she was helping her she was doing a decent job you know she would go with her to award shows and things like that which is kind of questionable to me because as a therapist like why are you going to award shows and going outside of the office with your client you know outside of a session so sometimes in sessions we'll like maybe have a walk and talk session in the neighborhood or we may go to like if we're doing exposure therapy we may go to um the store with our client to expose them to buying something at the store if they have anxiety or something like that or with like dbt dialectical behavioral therapy like therapists will make themselves more available to their clients to call and things like that and may have multiple sessions throughout the week as well as group therapy but i've never heard of a therapist like I'm going to be here when you wake up and I'm going to be here when you, when you go to sleep and I'm going to go with you to your award shows just to keep you in check and make sure you're okay. And she sure was getting distracted by the famous folks. Like the child was up on stage, ha had a panic attack, handed out an award and came backstage to find her therapist. And her therapist was sitting there talking to like some famous person. And I was just like, Shouldn't you be like back there looking for your client? And, you know, and because she was talking to some famous person, this child ended up standing at the uh, buffet p table binging and shit. And the therapist came up behind her. Like, this could have been avoided if you had just been paying attention to where your client was. Like, fuck everybody else around you. Like, <laughs> and so that's why I was just kind of like, why, why are you, it seemed like you really interested in these famous people when you're supposed to be interested. But you know what? Whatever. So... <laughs> So she has her like go without binging and she has her do it for about 24 hours and she basically it's not necessarily a baby step because she had the client she had Jeanette sorry she had Jeanette like track I think track how often she feels hungry or something or track how often she binges or something and then she tried to get her to not binge for like 24 hours that was the goal so she got her to the goal of not binging for 24 hours and then this bitch gonna give her the third the, the same day that she just finished not binging for 24 hours so you know she's exhausted she done ran the gamut emotionally because it takes a lot to not fall into your addictions and to be able to do that shit for 24 hours that's going she was winded you can't just come at somebody when they're emotionally winded like that and then hit them even harder and be like, so tell me about your mom. Tell me about your relationship with your mom. Tell me about, tell me about, the, and she was giving her like the third degree kind. And it was just like, I don't know if it was me. I would just talk about the experience of not having to, to been, uh, purge 
for 24 hours I would just be like so what did that feel like and you know that sounds like it was really hard and how do you want to decompress after this like what kind of things do you think you should do let's make a plan to kind of decompress after this long experience and then you know maybe next week we can dive a little deeper into things that are behind this experience you know shit like that to like meet your client where they're at if she's tired why are you trying to make her more tired but you know I, I think I was just upset about the whole life coach situation because these are reasons why it's okay to be a life coach these are reasons why it's hard to cross life coach and therapy because there are theoretical reasons as to why she is behaving the way she's behaving and she feels the way she feels and if you don't understand that shit off top you gonna hurt somebody mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like ayana van zant why are you yelling at these people <laughs> why are you putting them they already came from an aggressive harmful situation that they've been through a lot and yeah they may have an attitude yes they may have you know some shit going on and it's pissing you off but why are you yelling at these people why are you basically recreating the situation they just came from in a space that's supposed to be safe you like it <laughs> It's, it seems simple but for some folks it's not so i'm just whatever girl so you know i'm not saying life coach don't work but if you see something in a person that says this is beyond my scope like they're cutting or they're so depressed they can't bathe for a week life coach ain't enough <laughs> That's all I'm saying, because you don't understand the mechanisms behind why they can't bathe for a week. That's all I'm saying. That's all, that's all I'm saying. So she should not have confronted her so soon after her marathon of not purging. And she did. And she interrogated her about her mom. And basically, like, she did what an, any overwhelmed person would have did she got up and she walked the fuck <laughs> i was just like okay girl i mean i mean like she you came in there exhausted and then she want to give you the third degree i i understand you're not ready to face these and then even the questions i was just like because i've done that before where i may have said in certain terms that you know don't you feel like that was abusive but you know usually what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to in a roundabout way have the client come to that conclusion themselves so you have to use a lot of terms like wow that sounds like it was really rough how did you deal with that like the whole situation where she was talking about how her mom put her first all the time and i would have been like wow that's like that sounds exhausting like how did you and your mom put each other first all the time and not take breaks and like put yourself first like that sounds like a lot and then just have them talk and then eventually as they're talking, they'll be like, oh, well, you, and, then, and then they'll figure like, oh, and then you didn't say anything. You didn't say shit. You just was like, oh, what was it? Oh, really? Mm. <laughs> and then that way it feels more enlightening to the client because you didn't make them, you didn't tell them about themselves. You allowed them to figure it out for themselves. You know what I mean? And I had to work on that because I'm really blunt. So, you know. I never had a client walk out of session like that before. <laughs> so, you know, I've had a client where we've had a few sessions of like EMDR and that's eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy. Look it up. I made a video about it. Go look. It's, it's, it's complicated to explain. <laughs> and so I've had a client do like a few, a couple sessions of EMDR. And then after a couple sessions, it was hard they just kind of had to end services they had to text me or email me because the mdr is hard but i think it's amazing that they got to the point that they did in session even if it was only a couple sessions of emdr because it's difficult you know so yeah i've had clients that did that did that but i've never had a client that just straight up got up and walked the <laughs> oh it's just like oh mm, it's none of my biz god bless mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bless the therapist life coach. Yes. So anyways, 
she's she's she went to that therapy and then for a year i think she didn't go to therapy again and she was with this guy and the guy was deteriorating and things like that and then she went to uh someone that specializes in eating disorders and he was very straight and to the point he allowed her to baby step so we're not just going to start off with not purging we're going to start off with documenting how many times you purge we're going to start off with documenting what you eat on a regular basis so i can get an idea of your eating schedule and how and what times during the day how often are you starving yourself and then purging and things like that and then he had to just slowly start to write her emotions down every time she took a bite of food and it was a lot for her because she had to sit and face those emotions and thoughts that were coming up but she was able to do it so he worked her up to the point where she could get to a point where she you know wasn't per uh, binging and purging um as often and so and he's he you know he didn't shame her he basically was just like you um you're gonna slip sometimes and it's okay, just let it go. As long as you're consistent with taking care of yourself and doing these coping skills, then it's okay if you slip. You know, it's, uh, slips are gonna happen. This You slip in the course of learning how to do something. You're gonna slip and mess up and figure it out and do, it's like playing a video game. If I die on somewhere on the first level before the checkpoint, I'm gonna figure out what mistake I made to get to the checkpoint the next time I play. And then once I get to that checkpoint, I'm gonna do it again and do it until I get to the next level. You know what I mean? So you are going to make mistakes in the course of, you know, learning some new shit. And the goal is just not to slide. And that's what he said. Slip, don't slide. That's his, that was his wording. Something like that. Because I'm not 100% sure. And I don't want him to come back and be like, that's not what he said. And I'll be like, mm. <laughs> so he's something like slip, don't slide. Because sliding means you spiral into like a shame spiral. And then that's when you can't get up. And that's when you've been binging in Persian for like a month and didn't even realize it. That's a, that's a, that's when you slide. And so the goal is to not shame yourself because shame just doubles down on everything. And to just take care of yourself and give yourself grace, basically. So... We have kids, so going back to that, we have kids, a lot of us have kids for our own reasons. We have kids to keep a relationship together. We have kids to, you know, we have kids to, you know, have a mini me and all this other stupid shit that has nothing to do with the child that you're about to have because this child is their own person. And so if you don't take care of your child, you gonna get to a point where your child ain't talking to you and they'll be glad that you died. Because the thing is, is that if Jeanette's mom hadn't died, Jeanette, I, I don't, I think she knows herself well enough. And that's why she said what she said that's why the book is the, the title that it is i think she knows herself well enough to know that if her mom had not died she did not have the mental and emotional capacity to fight her off alone like that and it's because her mom is the type that you know like when you break up with like a narcissist narcissist or some shit and you go cold turkey and shit all of a sudden they doing shit that you ain't never they love bombing you they showing up at your house that, like you cut them off you block them on everything you live in your life they found out your new address all sorts of random shit that they never done before they just escalate because their object is gone narcissists and um manipulative people they see people as objects because that shit is is built up during their own traumas basically they learn that in order to survive their traumas they have to manipulate just like their abuser manipulates them so they can survive and so that turns into a personality i have to manipulate the world then in order to survive and that's just the way the world is and i will never take responsibility for my actions because i'm in survival mode and i am justified basically if she hadn't have died i don't think jeanette believes that she would have been able to separate herself from her mom because like i said her mom would have been chasing after her you know, wanting to know this, wanting to know that, wanting to be all up in her face, having these panic attacks and temper tantrums, threatening to harm herself. 
one second I thought she was borderline you know borderline folks they are hysterical at times they threaten they have these hysterical outbursts they self-harm and they threaten to kill themselves they will do anything and everything to keep you with them because they have severe abandonment issues but then I was like she shuts that shit off really quick there is no much talk of her self-harming and uh, she wants notoriety and attention but through her daughter so vicariously through her daughter it's like Munchausen but I want to like make you a star and damn near starve you to death instead of like giving you these random illnesses so I can get all this attention for being a good parent (laughs) so and then she uses I think she also uses Jeanette's like I think she uses food and things to control her because like when these people are telling her that oh she's anorexic oh you need to have her see a doctor I know a specialist that can help her she's like no she's fine she's perfect because in her eyes a perfect child is controllable and so if I control what you wear how you look um, even how you clean yourself what you eat if I control every iota of you then I will feel calm within myself because I can't control myself. And yeah, that's what happens when you have a manipulative parent. So I don't think she thought she could get get her shit together if her mom hadn't died. I think she could have got her shit together. It just would have been harder. It would have been how like Meghan Markle ignores her white family even though they be in the news and be trying to embarrass her and all sorts of random shit she she just ignores them and acts like they don't exist i think it would have had to been something like that i feel like you know just like her mom her so her mom when Jeanette went to Hawaii with the dude, the first dude, the dude that had the alcohol problem and stuff like that. Went to Hawaii with him, and she tried to hide it from her mom, but the paparazzi saw them and took pictures. I really wish they would leave these people alone because at the end of the day, if if these people end up dying or killing themselves, they don't care. Because look at Princess Diana, God rest her soul. You know I'm tired. Um, uh, but she went to Hawaii and with him and they was taking pictures and her mom found out her mom sent her like a hundred texts and voicemails and all sorts of weird shit. And then she, Jeanette, like her boyfriend at the time took her phone and put it in a hotel locker and was like, don't pay attention to that. And she tried to have fun for the rest of the time. But like, her mom had wrote on one of her fan pages, this long letter about how you shouldn't like, watch Jeanette anymore and all sorts of bullshit like do not and then when she gets back and talks to her mom her mom doesn't bring up anything doesn't say shit just acts like everything is normal that's how you know that she just had a tight fist on this girl and it's just like you can't just you you can't turn your kids in little objects because what's going to happen is they're not going to want to be around you anymore or they'll be just as bad as you or worse and it's like you need to work on your own shit Jeanette's mom needed to work on her own shit she was a hoarder hoarding is a sign of deep mental health issues anxiety a fear of losing things so that's another reason why I thought she may be borderline because she has this kind of fear of losing things but I think she just had a fear of not being in control of things around her and people and she also wanted the attention and notoriety and if things went against what she wanted she would just break down and she couldn't handle it and so I don't know I'm kind of like skipping back and forth between borderline and narcissist just because of the way that she would just get hysterical and start acting and also the abandonment issue stuff because narcissists have an abandonment issue too it's just it's different it's not like not as like hysterical and breakdown issues they're calmer I would say so I'm not sure I would have to have her as a client (laughs) but you know I was reading on Google because I was trying to figure out the developmental stage for when children develop empathy and it literally said like girls develop empathy at 13 like fully and boys develop it at 15 and I'm just like so for a good portion of your childhood you cannot think outside of you so because empathy is not necessarily i can put myself in the other person's shoes it's more so just understanding i understand what you have experienced you know i can understand the emotions around it but 
I don't have to put myself in your shoes to understand that or I don't feel like I'm in your shoes. And so what Jeanette had with her mom was codependency. That was an empathy, that constant worrying that something was wrong with her. That was fueled by her mom pushing her. But, you know, what I'm trying to say here is that for a long period of time during our childhood, we don't recognize that other people do things for their own reasons, that it's not us that that's causing it. It's them <laughs> that's causing things to happen in their life. And so for uh, uh, into the article zero to age 13 or zero to age 15 these children are taking everything and internalizing internalizing it everything that a parent does and internalizing it as this is my fault i did this my mom's sad because of me my mom's angry because i did something my hair doesn't look right my body doesn't look right i don't look right i don't feel right so my mom is reacting to me we're not we're not thinking like my mom's mom like my grandmother seems like weird like she's mean and you know i wonder if my mom might have experienced that meanness and maybe that's why she's kind of like her no we don't think that i've seen kids able to do that but that's because they have very loving and open parents that talk to them about these things and explore their the kids feelings around these things too and then they they you know they understand it at a younger age but if you're not having nobody talk to you and explain to you about your emotions you don't feel comfortable going to nobody and talking about your emotions and your emotions are completely internal and no one's explaining these things to you. So you're basically fodder for anybody to manipulate. So all these people that are like, you know, abusing children and stuff like that, you're basically like making these kids go crazy. Like, and and, and not because I know it's like a derogatory term, but like these push pull situations where you're hot, then you're cold, then you're hot, then you're cold. And it's never a balance will drive somebody completely insane like you're quite constant like in the book she's constantly questioning herself she's constantly questioning every move she makes she's constantly feeling like she's not good this is like a 24 7 feeling most of the time until you get away from these situations so yeah you can't you can't mistreat kids <laughs> like that is the perfect opportunity to create somebody that is just 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 gonna have a lot of shit to fix inside of them it's not okay and so you know when you abuse children you basically abusing the future it is what it is because they go off into the world like you not realize this little baby that came out of you is gonna go off into the fucking world and do things based on how they feel and if they don't feel good inside most of the time they're gonna do fucked up shit in the world. <laughs> and it are are they just gonna do fucked up shit to themselves are they're gonna do both like you know something else to take note of is that people that traumatize us tend to be in the minority i can count on like one hand the amount of people that have traumatized me and were detrimental to my life but there's not enough hands to count the majority of people in my life that are decent people. The people you sit in in the classroom with at school that seem to be pretty decent, even if you know them or don't know them. The cashier at the grocery store, you know, some of your coworkers that seem to be decent and genuine. Like usually when you go into a new environment, you may encounter one or two, three or four bullies or weirdos and stuff, manipulative folks. But the majority of people are going to be decent people. Like any school movie with a bully, it's one bully to the rest of the school like the literal school is the majority they could jump this nigga but no we're not going to do that because we are manipulated and scared and so that's what i remember when people try to intimidate me when i start to feel sad about like the things that people have done to me i just remember that the things that are good that people have done to me th those are the majority and the things that are bad, those are the minority. So I shouldn't be putting the minority's face on everybody else's face. And that helps me to just kind of move away from that feeling slowly but surely, you know, because it's a moment in time where I feel crappy. And so it takes a minute. But 
slowly and surely move away from that feeling so I don't feel that way. So, I mean, that's a way to kind of remind yourself. Understanding too, it's okay to cut off people that are hurtful to you. You know, if we're going to, if we're going to, you know, look in the Bible, let's look in the Bible since we're spare the rod, spoil the child, all this forgiveness stuff and da da da. And I don't want to forgive. And what is, what does the Bible say? Let me see. So uh, where is it? I think it's Colossians three. Um, where is it? 20. Children, obey your parents and everything because this pleases the Lord. Parents, don't provoke your children in a way that ends up discouraging them. So it says in the Bible, like y'all keep for, uh, 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 follow your parents and stuff. You forget the second part. Don't provoke your children. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then forgiveness. Forgiveness is like, it, like if you look at Proverbs, Proverbs says multiple times not to, you know, deal with fools get away from fools don't be around foolish people forgiveness is not about being around the person and rekindling whatever the fuck forgiveness is about being able to let go of the trauma that the person has left inside of you and holding on to the fact that all of that even what was left in you belongs to them that's their issue their stuff I'm going to give that back to you and I'm just going to let you have that. And I'm going to forgive you and let you go. You can go over there, (laughs) stay over there away from me and I'm going to heal. And the reason that you want to do that is because you want to stop being triggered by dumb shit. (laughs) Like I shouldn't be mad every time I see an ex's car drive down the street. I shouldn't like question like Jeanette she shouldn't question everything that she eats just because her mom did this this and this no once once you forgive and let go of that trauma and let them have it back and let them just be over there because the thing is they don't heal they don't fix themselves so we don't need to be around people that are going to keep doing the same shit I don't care if it's your mom and your daddy your uncle your uncle or your best friend you don't need to be around people that are going to do the same shit and have not healed and then just go about your life forgiveness that's all you don't have to be around them you don't have to be friends you just have to let go of that trauma realize that they were hurt something's wrong with them because they were hurt and maybe that makes you feel that's sad that's i'm sad that you were hurt but you still made a choice not to fix it so i can't be around that i'm mm, i can't i'm not even going to apologize like mm, stay over there so i'm not mad about the book title because you shouldn't have to talk to a parent that is going to for till the day they die abuse you because that's what you're asking people to do when you talk about this pseudo forgiveness and it's just you shouldn't act like that that's your mom that's your dad so they're supposed to be around somebody for the rest of that person's life because they're older than them so you would think they would die first but you never know even worse if the child dies first they're supposed to be around somebody for the rest of either of their lives that's going to constantly abuse them and manipulate them and never see that they're the problem so they're supposed to torture themselves mentally forever that's dumb i'm not wasting my life torturing myself for someone who chose to have a baby because parents are just people they're just people that decided to have a baby that's all that is they're people that decided to have a baby when they were not ready to have a baby those are the toxic ones you decided to ha- it's like like just how you look at your cousin who just has a mess of a life you know does drugs makes poor decisions because they've been through shit and things like that and then you watch them decide to have a baby and you look at them you wonder why did she decide to have a child like what why would she bring a child her life is already messed she's living in her car you know shit like that but then you bring a child into the world and then you start messing up that child's life just like you look at that cousin that's how people were looking at your parent that's abusive to you like how did how did rick decide to have kids did he burn down the school when he was 15 like doesn't he drink all the time like why why is he having children but the child looks up to rick like he's god like daddy drinks because of me he doesn't want to talk to me because of me obviously there's something wrong with me and the child has no clue 
that everybody looking at their parent like they crazy when in reality it's like their parents shouldn't have decided to have kids it is what it is they should have worked on them you have to work on your heel all of this before you can decide i'm gonna have a baby and raise this person to be you know whatever they decide to be you know what i mean like so parents are just people so that's why going back to the title of this video the nitty gritty you had to take your parents off the parent pedestal so what we do as children is we put them up on this pedestal and we say this is god they make the rules they tuck me in at night they feed me and all this other stuff even non-toxic people you know just imagine you having a kid and they looking at you like you god you just in there like <laughs> i mean i just watched like five animes last night and, and then and then fell asleep with like a ice cream stain on my shirt i guess if you <laughs> if you think so <laughs> whatever man <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, even people that aren't toxic would still be like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, that's why you got to make it clear to your children that you make mistakes too, that you just a person because they will have you on that God pillar for most of their lives, especially if you're a good parent, they're going to have you up there for most of their lives, just like Molly and Insecure. You know, if you watch Insecure, if you don't, well, then you should watch it. It's a good show. <laughs> It was like Molly on Insecure when she found out her dad cheated. She had him on that pedestal so high. Him and her mom. And when she found out he cheated one time 20 years ago and her mom forgave him, she just fell the fuck out. She could not believe it. You know, so even good parents, you know, your kids are going to put you up here. You got to show them. You got to find a balance where you show them that you trip and fall and do goofy shit just like everybody else. But you still like they parent, so you still here to take care of them and shit. But you ain't God though. You know, and that's hard to do for some folks, especially toxic people, because they love that little face looking up at them like they're God. And they love knowing that they can manipulate and torture this little person because it makes them feel powerful. <laughs> and it's it's a sad, sad thing. And that's why it's hard to do. But you gotta take your parents off the parent pedestal. Even if even if they are good parents because don't nobody like being on a pedestal because that means you can't make mistakes they may think they like it you know and moments like we like moments of being up there on a pedestal but everybody want to come home and take their bra off and, and and hop in bed and binge watch something and go to sleep just like everybody else <laughs> you know it's exhausting to be on a pedestal all the time and you feel obligated to be on a pedestal because you know you feel like that comes with taking care of children you don't have to be on a pedestal just take care of children you can let them know that you make mistakes that you trip and fall that you you know i don't know you make you just a person like you burnt the you burnt the spaghetti or some shit or you know you can show them that you are just a human being without being abusive <laughs> you know what i mean and there's nothing wrong and then as a child as an adult child uh you know what's gonna call it a, a teenager child a little child whatever child you are whatever age you got to take your parents down and see them as people these are people that decided to have me and i love them and i care for them but at the same time i have to understand that they're just people and they make mistakes and they're going to do things that i may not agree with sometimes just like parents have to understand that their kids are going to do things that they may not agree with you have to recognize that your parents are going to do things that you may not agree with you may not understand they may even be abusive and at the end of the day the choices that your parents make have nothing to do with you even if it impacts you choice your parents make to move even though you've been living here for 10 years and you have friends and stuff they didn't move because you <laughs> they moved because they couldn't afford that house no more or some reason some adult reason you know um your mom telling you a bunch of bullshit all the time or your dad's hitting you in the face it impacted you but it wasn't about you it was about their traumas and because you were just an easy target, you just this little person that they could easily maneuver and manipulate whenever they feel upset, they use that on you. There's even a distinction between like a child molester and a pedophile. 
So we're getting like deep in here and trigger warnings and all sorts of things. But a child molester, it's a power and control thing. So it's not necessarily a sexual orientation. They don't feel like they have to touch. They, they're fiending for children. It is a power. Both are wrong. So don't, no, 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 no. Both are wrong. Let me just preface. Both are evil. But a child molester is doing this as a power and control thing. It makes me feel powerful to do this to you, to touch you in this way. Maybe that's what Jeanette's mom was feeling. Who knows? Maybe, you know, because the way it read, it kind of read like a child that's playing with, you know, when you was little and you had your Barbie doll and you would take his clothes off just to see what it looked like. And you would touch it here and there and just be like, this is interesting. And then you would put his clothes back on and go about your day. That's what it sounded like. Like, this body is my body, and I can touch it and look at it and do whatever the fuck I want to it. Like that. That's what child molesters do. A pedophile genuinely believes that they are attracted to children. And scientifically, I think it's been proven, they got something wrong with their brain or something, where it's like a sexual orientation, basically. They find no attraction to adults. It's just their genitals don't move for the adults. And so, you know... They genuinely have a sexual attraction, a sexual orientation to children. And they should all be put on an island to burn. God bless. I said what I said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you can't fix a sexual orientation. That's some, some shit you're born with. So there are those, those folks out there. I watched this documentary. This one guy, he's a pedophile. He knows he's a pedophile. And so he started this group for like people that know they're pedophiles, but they don't want to touch children. They just have that urge and they don't know what to do about it. So he started like a self-help group for them. And like he does, he structures his life to where he never has to be around children. Like he refuses to be around children because it's like logically it's not something that he wants to do. Like he knows what happens to children logically when you do things like that to them and whatever. But that urge, that thing in his brain, whatever it was, I forgot what it, what it is, but they said that their brains are different. Um, it, he still got that urge and that attraction. And so, you know, you know, more people that have that urge and that attraction should be like him. There you go. There's another option instead of putting them all on an island and burning them to death. no, People that have that attraction should be like him and start self-help groups to work through these things so and stay as far away from children as possible. There you go. I gave you something. I gave you because there are people out there trying to not be this way. So I can't just ignore those people that are trying because that's not right. That's not right because you want this shit to stop. So if there's people out there trying to stop it... (laughs) You can't just tell them all that they need to burn on the island. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to give them that, you know, because, because it's the right thing to do because they're trying. So there you go. God bless the people that are trying. <laughs> and so you can't, you can't be out here hurting children. I keep going back to that just because, <laughs> you know, you got, you can't be out here hurting children. Cause they will, that shit will stick with them for the, just like shit you went through. Like people just be forgetting shit they go through. Or they don't care. Or they feel petty and feel like other people need to experience what they experience or it's not fair. And it's like, no, you're just spreading it. You're not stopping it. It's how like, you know, generate that whole generational wealth thing with black folks, how we still feel like our children should slave and work like we did. Then, then what's being fixed if we don't pass down the wealth to them, what's being fixed here. We're just doing the same shit. Like, (laughs) so, you know, you have to stop hurting children. I just, (laughs) these things keep going on and on. Like it doesn't stop. And it's like, not everyone's going to turn out to be abusive, but a lot of people are going to turn out to be hurtful to themselves. Like this woman could have died from this. Like when you have cancer in your family, it's more likely for you to inherit that cancer gene or whatever, especially with breast cancer. And so with her purging and stuff, you can get esophagus cancer from doing shit like that. And so I was just reading, it was like her mom had cancer and she over here purging. Like what if she get esophagus cancer? That's my anxiety. But you know, I was just, like all of this shit just keep and it's just torture it's just people being tortured even after the person that's hurt them is gone and that's a problem 
<laughs> because that means that for generations and generations, people are just going to keep hurting themselves based off of the people that t- originally tortured them. Because they can't let go of that generational trauma. And that would have been generational trauma if she hadn't let that go and worked on herself. She would have, if she had kids, she would have dragged that down to her kids and so on and so forth. So, you know what? It was a good ass book, though. And, you know, some things that can help with healing from these types of trauma is finding, first and foremost, a trauma based therapist, a therapist that specializes in trauma interventions to kind of help you work through the things that you've experienced give you new skills to deal with the triggers and the emotional reactions that come up from these triggers and help you be on a new trajectory of life to understand yourself and figure out who you are outside of the trauma you want to find your trauma-based therapist things that you may want to work on with a trauma-based therapist is um dbt dialectical behavioral therapy therapy i like this over cbt cognitive behavioral therapy because cbt postulates that how you think about yourself is how you're going to present yourself in the world dbt is more like how you think about yourself comes from an emotional place inside of you and once you tackle that emotional place then you can start to change how you present in the world so basically it gets you more in touch with the emotions that are tied to the trauma so that you can you know deal with it better and not have those emotional reactions EMDR is another one and that's more of a somatic intervention that deals with reprocessing the traumatic memories that you first made when you experienced trauma because it believes that trauma started and these maladaptive reactions started from that initial memory and if we can work through making that memory not as intense and just making it a memory instead of all of these emotional reactions that come up because you're triggered then you won't have those reactions anymore and it will just be a memory and you can let that shit go she mentioned in the book that she feels like she'll always be connected to her mom in some way emotionally it's in her bones I feel like that could be fixed. Mm. I've seen clients be fixed with EMDR, you know, working through that particular type of trauma. And I've had clients come into my office on, on the computer, whatever, talking about, I will never get past this. It will all. And then by the end of our few sessions, they're like, hmm, for the first time in 20 years, this does not bother me anymore. And I'm just like, yep, EMDR they don't even know how to work but that's what happens when you use things that were originated by brown people and tribes and eastern medicine and things like that Mm -hmm. and then the white folks take it and turn it into a a scientific intervention you know what I mean that's what happens look it up she found that out about EMDR by going to uh, Eastern tribes and and different different tribes and things like that, and she figured out how to do EMDR. So I don't know. I guess I just I just I'm glad that she's healing. I always kind of liked her character on iCarly. I mean, it was after my time, but like when I would come home from college in the summertime, there would be reruns of iCarly and shit like that on. So I would watch it sometimes, but. I always liked her character because she always seemed like just the way she talked was like in your face and blunt and shit like now I'm realizing that she was actually just angry on the show (laughs) but even when you watch her interviews she just seemed like real and shit and I would just be like that's cool she's like real and solid you know I'm always drawn to real solid people that just talk regular and like you don't have to decipher through their insecurities (laughs) in order to understand what they're talking about and you're not always questioning if you've said too much because they're insecure and sensitive (laughs) and so you have to like mask the things that you want to say because they're sensitive like I just mm, I've gotten to an age where I'm tired I mean I don't say anything derogatory I don't think you know so I try not to hurt people feelings but it's (laughs) it's just like i mean how many things do you want me to not say before i get tired i'm tired <laughs> so i always liked her and stuff and i've been watching a lot of don don dan schneider videos and shit on youtube too and all the shit he's been doing i watched this six hour 
I think it was eight hour video on Victoria. <laughs> I was just caught up in that shit. I'm gonna find a YouTuber and put him so you can see. Like his his shit was that shit. Mm. Mm. And then when he like like he said he's gonna make a Dan Snyder video. I'm just like, I wish you would hurry up and make a Dan Snyder. I need because the way he told the story about Victorious, I was hooked for the whole eight hours. And this is why I was moving too. So I was sitting up there packing shit, watching the video. I was like, wow. And then he did one on iCarly, and I was just like, "Wow, this shit is crazy! Wow, they was out. This man was out here hurting these kids on the television, and they didn't care. Mm -hmm. Had these kids' feet on the television. Like, what the fuck is wrong with?" <laughs> and of course, they did an interview with him. I think in like 2021 or 2020 or some shit, and he denies everything. And he, I'm sorry if they took it that way, <laughs> sir. When when you have empathy. You understand that if someone takes it a fucked up way, then even if you don't think you said something fucked up, it should hurt your feelings that you hurt their feelings. And you should be like, I'm so sorry that what I said hurt you like that. And it was fucked up. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do that again. And, you know, it's not I'm sorry you felt that way. That's not an apology. That means that you're going to do it again with people that you think won't feel that way. <laughs> but they probably do feel that way but you know whatever <laughs> so yeah this was an unpromptu impromptu you know video i was I w i've been binge watching um abbott elementary because i want to do like a whole review of season one um before season two comes out in september because apparently season two is going to be like 20 something episodes and i want to do each episode one by one so look out for that i'm going to do abbott elementary because it's a good ass show and the girl on there that made the show is amazing and i've been watching her ever since like she was doing them videos about he got money and i'm just like yes girl. so that's what's most likely coming up next but yeah, let me know what you think about this you know taking your parent off the parent pedestal did you read the book did you like the book i like the book <laughs> it was a good ass book um i didn't have the actual book because it's sold out so i had to buy it off a of kindle and um yeah i mean i heard that the um she did she acted the audio book too and i'm just like do i want to listen to her talk about the shower i don't i don't i don't know if i want to hear that out loud <laughs> coming from the person that it happened to i just it's just it's a lot <laughs> it was a lot to just read it and you want me to listen to you describe the things i don't mm. but i heard it was really good <laughs> all right it was really good and so yeah let me know what you think and get therapy if you feel like any of these things that i'm saying to you resonates with you please go there's there's therapy available there's therapy for black girls there's therapy for latinx there's therapy for black men all these are websites so it's com at the end of all there's psychology today i'm sure there's other therapy websites too people that will work with your budget there's therapists that have sliding scales so they will work with your budget um there's therapists that take medi-cal go on psychology today or one of them other websites put your zip code and then type in your health insurance and see who pops up um medicare this therapist take medicare you just have to search for it there's there's organizations that will give you free money to to have like at least a few sessions you know if you can't if you you really just out there and you can't afford nothing and all this other stuff you know get look watch the youtubes and the tiktoks and learn about some of this stuff at the very least you can get started so i would say i would use that to get started i wouldn't use that as an end all be all and if you are using tiktok or youtube watch people on there that are licensed therapists you know you can mix in a few like regular folks and stuff too because you find them interesting or whatever but like for the most part you be watching people that are licensed therapists that are talking about some of these things try not to diagnose yourself unless you know try not to diagnose yourself don't do that if things resonate then that's okay if it resonates but you don't want to diagnose yourself and then you come out and watch a, a 10 hour youtube and tiktok binge and now you think you have every every diagnosis under the sun that's unhealthy 
But if you just want some information like, hmm, my mom was this way. I wonder what YouTube has to say about some of these behaviors. That's okay. That's okay. Or sometimes I'm this way. I wonder what they have to say. Okay, this looks like it might be something. Maybe I, when I get a chance or when my budget is right, I need to go and see excuse me, see about getting a therapist, you know, and working through some of these things. And that's okay, too. But don't get caught up in these YouTube TikToks. Like I read one article that was talking about how a lot of women are on TikTok thinking they got ADHD from these TikTok folks. And I'm just like, (laughs) I mean, some people can be undiagnosed. There's a lot of women that are undiagnosed, a lot of men that are undiagnosed and same with autism there's a lot of men and women that are undiagnosed non-binary folks undiagnosed with these things they don't know they have it but the thing is it's like once you see something on there that resonates you need to go to therapy or you need to plan on going to therapy eventually you shouldn't just have it concrete in your mind i watched three tiktok videos about adhd now i have adhd now i'm going to tell everybody i have adhd and then there we go off into the sunset no <laughs> So make sure that, you know, you get therapy or at some point get therapy and it's okay to learn about these things online, but don't take them to heart until a professional has told you that this is probably what's going on and this is probably what you need to do about it. There you go. So yeah, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this episode, show, whatever. And yes, please like, share, subscribe because now I'm monetized and I get a little change here and there and it would be nice to, you know, have 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 some monies and I wish monies on everyone else too. I'm going to say that at the end too. So manifesting monies for not just myself, but for everybody else too because I don't think it's fair that I'm the only one that gets monies and I'm the only one asking for monies and then, you know, y'all out here probably don't got monies or whatever. Some of y'all probably don't got monies. Are you struggling and stuff? So I would hope that people out there watching to get monies too and we all can have the monies and we all can be comfortable and relaxed and happy yes okay so thank you for watching and later days